Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Open Book Broadcast. I am your host, Allie, with The Right Place, Right Time, an award-winning author, an international book coach and ghostwriter. And I am here as the host of Open Book Broadcast, where we talk about everything and anything to do with books and all the things in between, and we are an open book about it. I am so excited for today's guest. Um, so let me properly introduce her before we begin our wonderful conversation um, in the world of audiobooks. Mary Catherine Jones is the authority in all things audiobooks and is the owner and executive producer of Voice Over Vermont LLC, a professional recording studio in Shelburne, Vermont, dedicated exclusively to recording the spoken word. Curiosity is the core of what drives her. As a professional audiobook director and producer, she is always reading and always learning. Whether she's working with an author to record their memoir with their voice or casting a remote recording session for a national publisher, she brings her curiosity to every project that comes into her padded room, also known as her recording studio. When not recording, it's a sure bet that she's doing a project with the independent publishers of New England, planning a conference, or cooking a delicious meal. And for more information, you can visit voiceoververmont.com, which we will happily post in the show notes so that you can easily get over there to check out Mary Catherine and everything she's about. Mary Catherine, welcome. Hey, great to see you, Allie. Nice to see you as well. I feel like we've just been like hanging out in all the places lately. I know we keep running into each other, both uh, locally and online. It's fabulous. Yeah, I love it. So Mary Catherine, I know um, all kinds of things about you at this point, but our, our viewers don't. So tell us who are you when um, the lights in the office go down and you get to step away from the recording studio or your padded room? Um, who is Mary Catherine away from all of that? Well, I'm always going to have a book in my hand. It really doesn't matter like what I'm doing. So either if I'm doing it in the recording studio, I got a book in my hand. And if I'm not, then I'm reading a different book. So I usually have, you know, four to six books going at any given time. And of course, I run a book group. And of course, I help with book sales and, you know, festivals and that kind of thing. Um, when I'm not reading, I love cooking. Like I really love cooking and I'm actually pretty dang good at it. So that's good. <laughs> and I want to qualify that by cooking, that does not include baking because baking is not something I'm really good at <laughs> unless it has like <laughs> melted butter and that has a whole lot of forgiveness in the recipe. Um, but other than that, that's, you know, that's what I do. We got projects around the house. My husband and I are building a barn door right now. Um, so yeah, you never, you never know. I, I keep him busy and sometimes he makes me help him when I help, when I keep him busy. <laughs> now you're, you're building a barn door just to have a barn door. Well, we are sort of making some changes down to our music room slash guest room. And we opened up this alcove, which we realized needed to have some sort of a door. And I was like, Hey, we should get one of those sliding barn door things. And we got so excited about it. And totally committed to it until we realized that our nook is not like a normal size. And so we, nothing exists. We had to make one. So <laughs> there's been, there's been a little bit of grumbling, but it looks amazing. So I bet. And um, so tell us, you know, apart from books and cooking and all those fabulous things, how did you find your way over into audiobooks? One of my first jobs at a college was actually working for a publishing company here in Vermont. And I started off as, I guess, an intern to the sales and marketing department. And within like three months, I was the director of sales and marketing. Well, no, I was the national sales ma manager. And then a few years later, I became the director of sales and marketing. So like I said, everything I do kind of touches books, right? So I did that for a period of a number of years then step back from that as babies came into our life. Um, but during that time, I became heavily involved with the Children's Literacy Foundation. I was actually a founding member of that organization um, and also got very involved with libraries. And I did story times and musical story times about, for about 15, 15, 16 years. And when it was time for me to step back from that and think about something else to do, I started doing voiceovers. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do audiobooks. I'm going to record my voice and I'm going to do audiobooks. But the market said, no, you're not. You're going to do like <laughs> e-learning and stuff. Um, but along the way, I started doing some freelance production work for another production company and basically really got my skills up for recording other people. And so it wasn't too long before I kind of came full circle, 
came back to being able to record other people, but doing audiobooks and working with authors to do that. And I was extremely fortunate in that one of my very first sort of exploratory conversations was with one of our local legend authors here in Vermont, Bill Schubart. And I sat down with him because we had some mutual connections because of my time in publishing. And I just said, hey, I'm, this is what I'm thinking about doing. You know, what what do you think about it? And he said, I, I think you're going to be doing all of my books. So that kind of gave me a, a little a little nudge in the right direction, which was wonderful. And I've been doing it ever since. Uh, and how many years is that now? Started doing the voiceover recording work 15 years ago. I've been doing audiobooks about five years. Yeah. Um, and there's like such an array. What I love about going over to your website and looking at um, the audiobooks is that there's such a variety there. I mean, like every every genre exists, I think, over yes. in your catalog. Um, which is, which is really beautiful. Um, so I learned a lot about, um, audiobooks from you in some earlier iteration of some project we did way back when. Um, but I know that aspiring authors who are trying to figure out, okay, what editions should they have of their book? An obvious, the obvious ones are paperback and ebook, but audiobook is also another option. What is the benefit to an author in having an audiobook edition. An audiobook edition is just another way for readers to connect with the written material. Um, it's just a lot of people now are very, very busy, and so they like to read with their ears. Um, it might surprise some of uh, the listeners here to know that my favorite way of reading a book is actually like a physical paper copy. That is my preferred method. But I'll listen to audiobooks. I mean, obviously, but there are, I run into more and more people who say this is the only way that I am now getting information. I am not saying that an audiobook is for everyone. It really depends on what their goals are. Um, if they want to reach the most amount of people, then an audiobook is a no brainer. Um, if the book has been published for a number of years and now they're like, well, should I do one? I mean, really, the first question is has anybody asked you? If nobody has said, wow, I wish that you you know, had an audiobook edition, well, then maybe it doesn't need to be a priority. But if you're getting people saying, wow, I wish you had an audiobook edition, then it's something to think about. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, you know, it's like, is there a market need <laughs> for right. it? Right? And if they're saying like, hey, it would be better if, then that's like, that's your cue, right? Um, are there certain genres that translate the best to audiobooks? I would say, I would actually do the flip of that. And I would say that there are some that don't translate well, right? Okay. So some that don't translate well without a large upfront investment would be a graphic novel, right? I was actually approached by the Vermont, uh, I guess it was, what was it? The Folklife Commission. I can't remember the name of the organization, but they wanted me to adapt a graphic novel into audiobook, which was such a cool idea, such an exciting pro project. But when you think about having an audioscape and being able to have the sound equivalent of the visual panels, you recognize that it goes way beyond just having words spoken because that's not going to make any sense. So off the bat, anything that relies very heavily on graphics or charts um, and graphs to communicate what they're communicating without a lot of adaptation, that might not be a great first choice for an audiobook. But other than that, it's just anything that people are interested in. So, you know, my one of the things I love doing is working with the authors themselves to record memoir. I just absolutely love it. Um, and getting, you know, getting them comfortable in their own voice, reading their own words, it's a true joy. So memoir, narrative nonfiction, books where they're conveying a big idea. Um, that's an absolute great choice for an audiobook version. Um, but anything else, any work of fiction, anything that has a great story, of course, that's going to be a great audiobook. I think that you want something that's long enough to engage the reader and that's basically worth the initial investment of getting that recorded. Um, but other than that, sky's the limit. And then what about, um, like, so you mentioned, especially memoirs with the author kind of reading their own work. You know, are there 
any disadvantages to an author reading their own work? I mean, I have to imagine that it's more than just showing up to the studio and talking into a microphone, right? So, right. you know, what kinds of speaking or voice skills are beneficial for an author to already have to really make their narrating their own work really successful, you know, for a reader to be able to listen to for hours? <laughs> well, again, it depends on the goals of the author and the listener. I think when you have a genre like memoir, it's actually kind of weird when you have another voice narrating it. This mm. is literally their story. Now, that said, I've actually worked on a few projects where for reasons usually of health, um, the author, or maybe just proximity, um, the author says, you know what, I, I really want to hire a professional narrator. And so we can absolutely do that. Other than that, I think that the the re the main reason that you would not want that, that an author might not want to be their own narrator is if they have some sort of speech impediment um, or an, an overly thick accent that makes it difficult to understand what they're saying, right? So anything that interferes with the ability for a listener to hear, that's going to be a red flag. Um, if, you know, if they really don't want to do it, that's also like, don't do it. <laughs> You know, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to, <laughs> nobody's going to make you do it. Um, but other than that, I feel like it's, it's my job to work with whoever's in the booth, but particularly authors who are not professional speakers, but to help them sound like themselves on their best day. This is them telling their story. Um, will they have the dramatic arc of Meryl Streep? Not unless they're Meryl Streep. <laughs> You know, but yeah. that's, you know, if, if, if what they want is that kind of engaging performance, then that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. We can refer them to speech coaches and performance coaches, and they can have an, a whole other life being, you know, a public speaker performer. Um, but that's not necessary when you're creating an audiobook. Now, in writing, right, like in the writing world, so many things are by word, right? Like, so how a line editor or developmental editor is going to charge you is based on word. Um, when it comes to audiobooks and the development of them, is there still kind of like a, an equation or a formula for studio time or, or length of time it takes for an audiobook to be recorded based on the word count and scope of, of a manuscript? Yes. Absolutely. And of course, you know, you're looking plus or minus and some of it can be variable depending on whether, again, you've got like a whole bunch of really weird, like if, if you're looking at a science fiction novel that has an entire made up language and all of that, that's, we're going to take that out of the equation. Okay. We're going to, we're going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to talk about things that just already make sense. That already makes sense. Exactly, where you don't have to immerse yourself in an entirely new vocabulary. Um, generally speaking, every 10,000 words-ish is going to translate into an hour of finished audio, okay? Most people who are in the audiobook production world are going to be looking either at a per-word cost, just like an editor, or a per-finished hour cost, which is sort of broken down by a per-word Um I generally charge by the finished hour because that's just easier for me because 10,000 is easy to multiply. <laughs> um, and I know that for every hour of finished audio, it's going to take about two to two and a half hours just to record it, right? That's, you know, regular recording time. That's whether you're never been in a recording booth or whether you're a professional, sometimes you can narrow it down a little bit, but that's what I budget when I'm, when I'm scheduling recording time. And then it's going to be basically another two and a half or so hours of post-production on that to get it to the finished hour. So it's anywhere from five to six hours of, you know, sort of person time to get to a finished hour of audio. Wow. Okay. So between the narrator and what you're doing, six hours for one six, finished yeah. hour, for one finished hour of like roughly 10,000 words. So if we've got a, I'm trying to do math, which is really not my strength here, especially on the, the slide, 10, is a but, magic like, number. <laughs> but if you've got a 60,000 word manuscript, yep. then we're talking 60 hours, 
six 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 hours per ten thousand words. Well, so what so what you're doing? No, so for for sixty thousand, that's going to end up being six hours of finished audio, right? And so it's going to end up being about, I would say between thirty and thirty five per person hours to do that. Okay. But you don't have to worry about the person hours. That's basically our job. You know, when most audio book studios, like I said, are going to price based on the finished hour. So it's yeah. just going to be, you know, X number of dollars per finished hour. And the finished hour will be very clear because it'll be finished and it's going to be, yeah. you know, it's going to be five hours, you know, five, five and a quarter hours to six and three quarters of an hour. It depends on how rapidly the narrator is recording, which is going to be dictated by the tone of the piece. Yeah. But even even if the cost is related to the finished hour, for people who are thinking about narrating their own audiobook, they need to understand the time investment because they could be spending hours in the studio oh, reading. Well, what they would be doing, yes. I mean, like if you, so if 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 you're, if I'm recording you, Allie, and you say, look, we're going to do this audio book at 60,000, but we want to do an audio book at 60,000 words, right? I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to schedule you for 15 to 18 hours um, in the, in the studio. And then, you know, break that up over several days, obviously. Um, Cause we, you know, we like to let you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> let your voice rest. But yes, it will take I me mean, your commitment time wise is going to be anywhere from 15 to 18 hours. And you'll see like I've already, you know, I've, I've inflated it a little bit because what I do is I always make sure we schedule a little more time than I hope we will actually need because then we all get really excited when we're finished ahead of schedule. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it also, it builds in that extra time in case you know, something happens and you're running late to the studio or you have a cold <laughs> like I do right now. And it's just not a good day for recording. And so it just gives a little more flexibility to the schedule. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's really important to know though, like that you're going to be committing several hours to, to recording. Now um, you have a studio, people can go to your studio, but what about those people who don't live in Vermont? So how do you work digitally? or remotely well first of all they should come to vermont i mean well, yeah you, know, I you, agree. Can, you can back me up here this is that's sort of a no-brainer right um i actually do have a lot of authors that have been coming they do sort of a recording retreat um and we schedule it so that they can enjoy all the all the beauty that vermont has to offer check with your accountant um as far <laughs> as write off <laughs> but if coming to Vermont isn't an option and they want to use their own voice, there's two different op options there. Um, I can work with I can work with them, figure out where they are and find a professional recording studio that is close to them. And basically I dial in and I remotely direct them and do everything and I get all the audio. We still do all the post-production and create the audio book for them. Um, in that case, there would be an add on charge because we have to pay for the studio time. When they come to Vermont, I, I waive my studio, my studio fees. Another option is to actually, I work with authors to create a mini recording studio ish in their own homes. So setting up usually a good place as a walk in closet, the more clothes, the better, believe it or not. Um, and we have, you know, I've got an equipment list and we do a sound check and then we can set up a recording situation where, again, I'm remotely directing and they are recording in the comfort of their own home. The drawback to that is because it's not a professional recording studio, it means that there's more work in the post-production. So instead of it being, you know, two and a half to three hours in post-production to get that finished hour, it's going to be more than that because it's because it just takes more work to do that you still get a wonderful finished product at the end but it's it's a little more labor intensive on the post-production side well i mean if all those stacks of shoes fall in the background that's right. you know while you're while you're recording you're going to need to edit all of that out um all right well that's pretty i mean that's pretty cool like to think about being in your own home kind of like setting up shop if you will to, oh, yeah, that's great. to record record your own your own audiobook um what are some of like the frequently asked questions when authors are coming to you for the first time kind of contemplating an audiobook what are what are some of the things that often kind of come up for them we've probably already hit on some 
I was about to say you've hit you've hit on a bunch of them. Some of the things though that we talk about are vocal exercises to make sure that you know you kind of open up oh, your throat and you know massaging your Adam's apple and everything. Um, I give out a list of what to eat and what not to eat. Stay away from dairy because that ends up making kind of nasty noises when you're in front of a microphone. That's hard to edit out. Um, so we talk about that. And then it's really just about what's the process going to look like. We talk about usually what I do is we record for around an hour at a time and then get out, you know, stretch, breathe the free air um, before going back in. And that would be the same even if they were in their own space. Um, really, once you've been talking for an hour, you need to just take a quick break. I'm not talking about a long one, but, you know, five to 10 minutes to just get up and walk around um, and then come back in. I don't usually schedule more than six hours in a day. Um, and I generally try to encourage people, if we can make the schedule work, to do no more than four hours unless they are professional narrators, because it's it's tiring. Um, yeah. I have had, I, I had an author who came to Vermont to visit his sister and he was excited about the idea. Maybe he would narrate his own book. And so I said, Hey, come on in. Let's, you know, let's you can get a sense of what that would be like. And he sat in here for 10 minutes and he came out and he said, I am definitely hiring someone. <laughs> well, at least, oh you know, he's like, yeah, this is not for me. No. Yeah. Now, what about like, do you start from the beginning of the book and read all the way through? Like, yes. or do you jump around or? Yep. Generally you start at the, you start at the top and you record to the end. Um, occasionally we'll do things out of order if it makes sense to. Sometimes I work with more than one narrator at a time. Um, like a, well, first of all, if you have a romance, that's like a, you know, his point of view, her point of view, alternating chapters, then obviously you're, you know, going to be just doing one narrator at a time. Um, same thing. If you have multiple narrators, you're going to be marking the places in the book where they come in and then you'll be recording that in sequence. Um, and then when the next person comes in, you would be recording them in sequence. It's okay, just easier so to keep track does of that it. mean that they're not coming in together and talking back and forth in a dialogue? That means you're just doing one voice and then the other, and then you have to bring them together in editing? Exactly. Um, okay. I do not. So one of the things I don't do is the big, like multicast dramatic productions. Um, okay. Those are great. Not my thing. Um, however, there are, there are books that I've done. Like I said, there's the, you know, alternating chapters, that's easy peasy. Um, sometimes one of the books that I worked on this year, which was so amazing, was a memoir that Jane Dwinell wrote that was a combination of her husband's blog that he started when he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So mm -hmm. he was blogging about his experience and then she had sort of responses to what was going on. Um, her husband passed away. We hired a narrator to be the voice of her husband, Sky, And between Sky and then Jane, there were chapters where sometimes it would be a blog entry, her response back and forth and back and forth. So it was not really dialogue, but it yeah. was definitely an exchange. Um, and so we had to make sure that all the pieces were in the right place, <laughs> that nothing was omitted. Um, and that can happen when you start having a lot of different pieces, but that's part of my job. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Fascinating. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea about that piece. I mean, I always yeah. kind of wondered like, oh, there's multiple characters in this. How does this, how does this work? Um, okay. So what about, um, let's just like kind of wrap it up here. You know, what is like one thing that you wish you didn't have to keep repeating yourself on <laughs> when it comes to audiobooks? Like just gosh, darn it. Like, why won't they just get this one thing? Um, the audiobook will not sell itself any mm. more than the physical book will. And yeah. so that's why when you asked me initially, why would somebody do an audiobook? I, I was being very deliberate in the way I was answering you because it is about, ex it's, it's about expanding the access to your thoughts and ideas, but having an audiobook isn't going to be this huge boost in sales 
mm-hmm. any more than you know the ebook version is. It's it's just a, and and how do you how do you promote an audiobook is by promoting your book. The audiobook does have specific you know things that that you can use that to market your book you can have sound clips you can pair it with some video you can have images of the book with the sound and so that's awesome you know it's something that the the physical book doesn't have but it's not it's not going to it, what it's going to do is it's just it's just going to make more options available to potential readers awesome i love it Mary Catherine, where can people connect with you? And is there anything that you've got that, that's coming up or that you want to let people know that you've got for them? Let's see. They can connect with me on my website, voiceoververmont.com. And up on the website, you can see like a book a call with me. Of course, that's free. It's just basically if you've got questions, book a calendar appointment. I'll be happy to answer them. I can give a rough estimate if we have a word count on your project. Um, and basically... What I do is I'll help brainstorm with you. Does it make sense? How would this work? What What's the best way to approach this? Does it make sense to do it? I don't I don't try to push anybody or sell anybody on the idea of an audio book. I'm here to facilitate it. And if it makes sense, then it makes sense. Um, so find me on the website. I don't have any particular promotions that are coming up, except to say that my prices will be rising in January. Um, But any project that is booked now between now and the end of the year, even if it doesn't start until 2024, I'll honor this year's prices. So there you go. And the other thing, and I'll do this as as a plug, I work a lot with the independent publishers of New England, IPNE. So check them out at IPNE.org. We are putting together a conference and Allie is going to be one of our featured speakers. Um, and registration is open. So that's going to be, it's all online and that'll be the first weekend of November. So check that out, ipne.org and register for the conference and you'll get to see me. I'll be sort of running around behind the scenes um, and, uh, and Ellie will be there to talk about why you should not write a book until you read her book. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. All right, Catherine, thanks so much for joining me on Open Book Broadcast. I can't wait to get this out um, to everybody who's thinking about an audiobook. And uh, folks, I'll be back again next month with another episode. And uh, remember, we're always here to talk about anything and everything book related. And we're an open book about it. Bye for now. Bye-bye.